So there is the first three. Any questions? Notice I've got all the, both the two versions. This one causes kids a bit of trouble because you got to reverse it, right? Normally we use less than arrows, right? But in this one, because it only goes in one direction, x has to be greater than negative 1 because negative 1 is the lowest one, right? Any questions for 1, 2, 3? Why is number 3 a relation? Because right there, let me choose a good color for this, right there, because those are both closed dots, you hit the line twice. Understand? If this were an open dot, is that a function now? Yes. Because that dot where they hit is technically not there. Everybody cool? Any questions on one, two, three? Jeshen. On two, how did I get negative two? Where? Oh, one, two, three. I counted badly. It's negative three. I'm old. Why you got to be that way? I never say that to you guys when you give me a bad answer. Why did you get that? At least she's not aggressive. I had a kid here that was in my grade 11 class once. And he, but he wasn't very good at math, but he was still aggressive about when I made a mistake. It was very frustrating for me. And there's four, five, and six. Have a look. Yes, Jeshin. What do you mean? So let's say this graph, instead of being where it is, uh, just let me erase what's there. So instead of you saying it started there and then went that way, right? So that would be x is greater than or equal to 2. Okay? But you can only do that if there's an arrow. Right? If it goes forever in any one direction. Now, what if this arrow, I told you it wasn't flat. What if I told you it was slightly curving up? Then your range would also go up to infinity. Right? So your range would be y is great. Oh, I should do that in blue. Your range would be y is greater than or equal to negative 3 if this was slightly going upwards. Do you understand? Does everybody understand? But it isn't. I told you it was going flat. So that's why it stops at 3. Everybody good? Okay. Any questions from 4, 5, and 6? Going once. Going twice. Third and final. Okay, on your quiz day, there's going to be domain and range questions. Everybody's going to get 100% on them, aren't they? Yeah, because I am asking you right now if you have any more questions. All right, let's move on to the next six. Of those three, I expect you to have had trouble with, I expect people to have done number one poorly. The rest of them you shouldn't have had any trouble with. Uh, maybe number three, because it reverses things. Any questions there? Why is number one not this. Why can I not do that for number one? 
because they're dots. There's no line. This only works if there's a line. Any questions? Erlen. Number two. It's an open dot. So you're talking about the range? Sorry? The domain. Okay. The domain has the open dot, which means that that point doesn't exist on the x-axis. So it gets up to, but doesn't actually touch zero. So the first x value we have is technically point negative point zero 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 forever one. But it's never actually zero. So that's why we have to have the less than and the open bracket or the round bracket. Now somebody usually says there, okay, well if that dot doesn't exist, and how come it's in the range? Why is it in the range? Because that value of a range value of 1 exists right over here. Everybody understand? Okay. Any questions? Going once. Jimmy. How do you know what? If it's a closed dot, you use the equal sign. If it's an open dot, you use the regular sign. Because this is saying x is less than 0. It's also saying it will never equal 0. So it'll get right up beside 0, but never actually touch it. Now, some of you may be a little uncomfortable with number theory that way. Do you all understand what this actually means? Do you? Here's an example. When are you allowed to get your driver's license, your learners, your L? 16, right? So your age must be what? Greater than or equal to 16, right? My birthday is April 27th, okay? So you can all put that in your phone calendar so you can send me presents in April. It's cool. I, I'm very gracious in my acceptance. Anyway, the reason I'm saying this, and I was born in 1975, right? So I turned 16 on April 27th, 1991. Everybody cool? Now, my age on April 26th was what? 15 and 364 out of 365, correct? Everybody agree? Because that's how many days there are in a year. Everybody cool? Yeah? Okay. So now if I go to my calculator, 364 divided by 365, 0.99726. So my age right there on April 26 was 15.997. Could I get my license yet? No, because I didn't hit 16. But look how close I was. Three one thousandths of a year away. But I'm not 16, so I can't get my license. Everybody understand? Let me give you another example. I turned 19 on April 27th. Uh, nine, 2000, no, what am I doing? 1994, right? Everybody agree? Now, on April 26th at 11.59 p.m., was I 19? Could I go get a drink in a bar? What happened in one more minute? I was 19, I could go get a drink in a bar. Does everybody understand? At this point, 
I was 18. And then we're down to the minute now, right? So minutes in a day, 24 times 60, 1440. So I was 18 and 364 out of 365. And then I get to add 1439 out of 1440. I get to add that decimal to it. So go back to my calculator. We know 365 is 0.997, right? So I was 18.997 plus 1439 divided by 1440. Ah! 18.997. Ah! Plus 1439 divided by 1440. Oh, I did that wrong. But anyway, you can see how close I was to being 19. But on a graph, would you include that dot? No, because I wasn't actually 19. Do you understand? Everybody gets it? Okay. That's the best illustration I can give you for less than versus less than and equal to. And it works for everyone? Everyone's cool? Okay. Now I actually, next time you guys are working, I'm going to actually find out what the actual decimal is there for, for age. That'll take me a moment, but I'll do that later. Right now, I'm doing math with you people. The rate, yeah, as soon as Microsoft OneNote will work again, I will. Number three on the second page, yeah? This one, right? Okay, so range is the Y values, yes? So I look only on the Y, and I go down as low as I can go, right there, yes? And there's a Y value, you can see, all the way up to there, right? So that part is easy, negative two, less than or equal to Y, less than or equal to one, right? But there's another Y value right there. So I have to add in a union of another one where Y equals three because that's what that set is, right? Does everybody understand that? If the domain or range has more than one set. So, somebody always says, well, then why didn't we use a union for? Why didn't we use a union for this one? Right? Because, look, you have to look at what is actually happening. Your domain started there, yes? And it went to there, yes? But notice, it started again right away. There's no break in my, dom my domain. So, I don't need a union. But in number three, there's a gap. So I need that union because there's two different sets. Understand? You are making a face that says you do not understand. No, 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 no. That is not what happens here. You do not get to do that. Yes, okay, okay. If this line was not here, that's the range, right? Okay. Now, pretend that line's not there. What's the range? What's the only Y value on that graph? It's right there, and it's 3, correct? Do you understand that? Okay, 4, whatever. So I counted wrong. That's not what, that's not understanding, that's miscounting. Okay. But now the question becomes is it 
do you understand why I needed the union here, but not in the other one? And I'll show you, I'll go back to what I was doing. What's the range there? It's four, correct? So on this graph, as it's drawn right now, my range y has to be four, correct? But when I add this part of the line in, there's more range. So I have to add that range here. Because there's a gap, I have to do two. In this question, there's no gap on the domain. And look on the range. Starts here, goes up to here, but then starts again right away. No gap. So no union. Everybody cool? Now, hold up. Make sure I counted all these right. Yes. 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 Okay. Go. Check those now. A lot of kids ask about that one. What does that mean? That E means all the R's, which are all the real numbers, not just rationals. And sometimes you will see that written like this. X is a set and then colon, oh no, other way around, sorry, the colon comes first. X is a set such that, that's what this means, X is all real numbers. It's just math shorthand. Does it matter in any way to you understanding the concept? Does it matter in any way? Not even a little bit. It's just the way we write it. When does it become port important? Later in math, when it matters what you're measuring. Okay? But we'll talk about that when it does become important. Is everybody good? Yes, Isha. Why is there a zero in the range for number four? Because right there are some y values of zero. So I have to have a zero in that range. Because that point right there is negative two, zero. There's a y value, it's zero, so it has to be in the range. Anybody else? Sweet. All right, it is 9 a.m., which means I would like to let you get ready for your polynomials test. Here are two wicked hard factoring questions. Wicked hard. Crazy, wicked, kick you in the butt hard. If you can even get halfway through these, you are very, very well positioned for your test. Okay? See what you can do with them. And before anybody asks, these are way harder than what's on your test. But to do these, you have to do all the easy steps that are on your test. Just like I've been saying for the past week and a half. Do the stuff you know how to do and then see if that leads you to the next step. Okay? Okay. Give her. Oh, I forgot to bring lunch today. Huh? 
But it's okay, because last night I went to a taco place in America, because I was trying to go surfing yesterday, but it didn't work very well. And this taco place had the biggest tacos ever made. They had a burrito that was that big around. I'm not even lying. The tortilla was like this big. I didn't order it. Because I can't eat flour tortillas. I'm not supposed to. The guy in front of me, though, this giant, gigantic, huge Navy guy, because there's a naval base on Whidbey Island. Big, giant Navy guy. Have a jumbo burrito. I'm like, and we're watching me and my buddy. Holy crap, we got to see what this thing is. And they take out the tortilla, and the guy needs two hands to hold the tortilla. It's so big. Puts it down, fills it up with food, rolls it up, not a word of a lie. It's that thick. It was awesome. But I didn't get it. I just got tacos. Anybody not here today? One, two, three empty desks, 27 kids. Awesome. And everybody was even on time. We I haven't replaced them yet. I haven't decided if you guys are worth gummy bears yet. We'll see. You're on the right track. How many people think they're comfy with A? Huh? You got B? How many people are worried about A? Okay. It is long. It looks scary, exactly. But it isn't scary, is it? Because remember, do what you know how to do. Go one step at a time. Do you know what to do with something that looks like that? What would you do with it, Jimmy? Pardon me? Yeah, what was the first thing you would do? What's the first type of simplification you're supposed to do when factoring? Kind of. You're supposed to GCF, right? Is there a GCF there? Yeah. Three, right? And of course, there's more than one way to do this as well. So if you take a 3 out of there, what do you get? 3x squared plus 7x plus 12, right? What could you do there? You could take out a 5, which would get you 5x squared minus x minus 20. What could you do there? 
Take out a 2, which would get you 2x squared minus 16. Now, can you do something with that, that, and that? So, do it. And remember, this is only one way to do this question. There's another way to do it that's even easier if you actually know what's going on. This is the way you would do it if you've only memorized steps. All right? This is the easier way to do it, but is more work. Understand? There is another way to do this that isn't as much work. But you have to get what's happening. Yes, of course you could just do that. The other way to do it would be to put together all the like terms and then factor the gigantic polynomial that's left over. Both ways work. It's pretty gigantic. No. Oh, over here I'm writing the answers for you. Over here I'm messing with the... Uh, check my mark. I'm putting in the stuff that's going to go in today. No. 
All right, it is 9-11. How many people feel they have an answer for A? Nobody? What do you think it is, Zach? It is absolutely that. That's the right answer. So, I showed you how to get to here. And then what did I do with the green one? I factored it there. I factored the blue one there. And I factored the yellow one there, correct? Now, what do you notice? X plus 4 x plus 4, x plus 4. So I GCF that, took it out, right? Now I had this. Now, if I expand this, 3x plus 9 minus 5x plus 25 plus 2x minus 8. 3x minus 5x plus 2x all disappear. 9 plus 25 is 34. 34 minus 8 is 26. 26, x plus 4. Now, the other way you could have done it, if you know what you're actually doing and not having to follow steps, you could have gone 3 minus 5 plus 2, x squared, which disappears, right? The x squareds go away. 21 minus minus 5 is 26, right? 26x, now they're dealt with. 36 minus minus 100 is 136. Minus 32 is plus 104. Now, what's common there? 26. 26x plus 104. Er, x plus 4. Now you can see how the green was way less work, correct? But to do that, you had to avoid the trap of saying, I know what to do, I know what to do, I know what to do, and going through all the steps. That was early, but go ahead. See you after the break for your test on factoring. Okay, let's do some math. Open to page 152. What? Dr. Evil. Please, I have a degree in evil. Huh? Hey. All of you should be able to do this page down to there by yourselves. Talk to your neighbor, figure it out, go. Okay, what are the independent and dependent variables? Who's telling me? I got time, don't worry. I'm in no rush. Sale, or sorry, Sartaj, hit me. Time is the independent variable. Why? Yeah, but why? That's not why it's the independent variable. That's, if this graph wasn't here and I told you I had a graph of depth versus time, how would you know time was the independent variable? If this graph wasn't here, that's not the right answer. So how do you know time is the independent variable? Because it'll continue on no matter what. I suppose so. Except at some point the dive ends, right? So I need a better reason than that. Nobody can tell me why time is the independent variable. Pardon me? What? Jimmy what? 
What depends on how much time it's going to take. Oh, so you're going the other way around. Jimmy says this diver's destination is underwater, yes? And that depth depends on how long she is underwater. So Jimmy found the DV first and recognized that if that's the DV, then time must be the IV. That's a good way of looking at it too. Because of course, her depth depends on how long she is in the water, right? Am I diving right now? No, so what's my depth? Zero. Is time continuing to pass for me? Does my depth change? No, so time is independent, right? Good job. How many minutes did the dive last? Jimmy? 30 minutes. Nice work. How did you know that? Okay, but how did you know the dive stopped at 80 minutes or at 30 minutes? Because the red line stops there. Her depth is back to zero. She's back to her starting point. At what times did she stop her descent? How many times did she stop swimming downwards? Twice. At what times? Four to eight minutes and 10 to 14 minutes. How did you know? Pardon me? The depth stopped changing. Did time stop? Will time ever stop? No. And that's shown with a flat line. Excellent. What was her greatest depth? 20 meters. Now, this is a very important thing to understand. Is this graph a drawing of what she did? Or is this graph a pictorial representation of data? A or B? B. Graphs do not show what actually happened. They show the, a representation of the data because what actually happened is, of course, there was a boat and there was a diver who jumped off the boat. One flipper, two flippers, air tank, one arm, two arm, head, face mask, two. And she went down, hung out right there for a while, went down some more, hung out right there for a while, and then came up, right? That's what happened. The graph does not show that. Everybody understand? Good. How long did she spend at that depth of 20 meters? Four minutes. Excellent. And now, what is the domain and range? We'll do domain first. What is it? I will take it in any form you wish to give it to me. Set notation. Interval notation, whatever you want, go. Whoa, I can't hear you. You're all talking at once. This is that thing I just showed you 12 questions on. And you all told me you understood it. And I asked three times for each row of three. So I asked 12 times if everybody understood it and not one person put their hand up. So I should be right now having difficulty choosing the one out of the 27 hands that is going up 
because all of you just told me that you understood this. Every single one of you. Even though I went going once, going twice, going thrice, 12 times. So there were 36 chances for you to tell me. Zach, what is it? Thirty. That is one way of writing it. You also could have written it this way. What would I put here? X? No. Time. Because this time we're actually measuring it. What would be the range? Zach, you better go again. Square bracket, zero, comma, twenty, square bracket. Zero, less than or equal to. What goes here? Depth. All right. Now we have to do some work with this graph. If you have not done science 10 yet, this unit will be very helpful to you when you do the physics in science 10. If you've already done science 10, you already know just about everything I'm going to say right now. If you are doing physics 11, this unit will help you, remind you how to approach physics 11. So let us have a look at this situation and tell me what, where on this graph for what time intervals is this diver moving the fastest? The time intervals we have split into three. There is interval one, then she stops for a while. There is interval two, and she stops for a while. And there is interval three. When is she moving the fastest? In interval two. Why, Charlotte? The line is the steepest. The line is the steepest. What do I mean by the line is the steepest? It means that... In this two minutes, she traveled eight meters. Does everybody understand that? Especially the grade nines, because you won't have seen this written this way. Now, that tells us if she went eight meters per every two minutes, where else in your lives have you seen a distance divided by a time every speed right how fast do we drive down the highway? 100 kilometers per hour now do we give our speeds in 200 kilometers per two hours no we give them per single units yes so how fast was the diver moving here four meters per minute everybody understand that is what is called the rate of change. Now, speed is the easiest rate of change to talk to with you people because you all understand kilometers per hour. But every graph gives you the rate of change. How did we find it? We did the change delta. That triangle means change in the dv divided by the change in the IV between any two points, all right? So if in this part she was moving at four meters per minute, what was her rate of change in interval one? How far did she go in that four minute time? She went 12 meters per four minutes. But we don't want 12 meters per four minutes. We want it times one minute. So how do I get four to be over one minute? I divide by four. So what do I do with 12? Same thing. She was moving at three meters per minute there. How fast was she moving in interval three? Twenty meters per 
14 minutes. That's not a speed we would ever give. So we have to divide 20 by 14 to find one meter per minute, which is 0.7. Right? Can everybody read and understand a graph a little bit at least now? Yeah? Good. Next question. In number two, you are to do exactly the opposite. You are not to read a graph. You are to tell me what is happening based on this data. So, now this is a really good question because it's really easy for me to show you how I mark things. Okay? I would make this question out of four. Here is what... What did you guys say happened? <laughs> Jeshin, go ahead and try a little louder. Right? Then what happened? Was it magic? Wingardium Leviosa, what actually happened? How did the watering can get more water in it? You filled it, right? The question says, what happened? It didn't just miraculously get that. Carry on. Uh huh. You used it and poured it all out. Excellent. Perfect. That's exactly what happened. That would get one out of four. Does everybody understand? Now, here's why. That's what happened. You're correct. But you people before grade 12 are going to be facing a different kind of marking scheme. And that marking scheme is based on four steps. The four steps are this. You understand what is happening minimally. You have some idea what is going on. Two, you can explain a little bit of what is going on. Three, you have a firm grasp of what is going on. And four, you understand it inside and out. Does everybody understand? Okay, so yes, Jeshin, that is a great answer. No problem with it at all. Could it be made better? And that is what is facing you people soon. Do you understand? You are all used to seeing rubrics. I don't like them. I am not a big fan of them. I think they're awful, but other people love them and they use them all the time. All of your work is going to start being marked by that type of scale. One, two, three, four. Like you were marked in elementary school. Remember? Doesn't meet expectations, minimally meets expectations, meets expectations, exceeds expectations. I personally hate it because in math, X equals seven. If you don't get X to equaling seven, you haven't met my expectations. So therefore you should get one. Really you should get zero, but we're not allowed to give zeros because it might hurt your feelings. But unfortunately I'm not in charge of marking in math, so I don't get to do that. So, how do we get the 4 here? Well, we could say A to B, we filled the can at a rate of 0.75 liters per 30 seconds. Now, is that a sensible rate? That gets you a three. You want the four for that step? What would you turn that rate into? 1.5 liters per minute. That's the first part of a four-point answer. Does everybody understand the difference between there was 1.1 1 .1 liter and then there was 1.75 liters? Everybody see the difference? The first one, that's what happened. The second one explains why. 
Is everybody good? Okay, what happened from B to C? Time passed. What do you got, Charlotte? Oh, sure. Um, simply because you can do it in your head, right? Because that's half a minute. So I times two times two. Could you divide that by 30? Yes, but that gives you a yucky, yucky number. This is tidy. I would just, it's a, to get a four answer, a four point answer, you have to understand the nuances of the math, right? And the rate that makes sense here would be per minute because it's tidy. You understand what I mean? That's the difference between I know what I'm doing to I'm all up in it, right? Okay, what's happening B to C? What's actually happening to the water in the can? Nothing. But that's not a scenario, is it? She walks outside. She walks over. For me personally, it would be he walked over to his sister who was sunbathing in the yard on her front, on her belly and then dumped water all over her back because I was a big brother and that's what big brothers do. Any of you ladies with big brothers, you know that they're dicks. It's just the way it is. We all are. It's part of growing up. Just like if you ask your big brother, oh my God, she's such a pain in the ass. All she does is complain and whine and cry. Those of you that are in the middle see that all the time. How many people are in one of those scenarios? None of you? Your brothers and sisters all work together perfectly? Like a TV show? Of course they don't. Who has a family that works like the TV show where everybody helps everybody? And in half an hour, everything works out. Really, Zach? You're a lucky man. Oh, well, that doesn't really count then, does it? All right. What's happening B to C? So great. One answer, nothing happens to the water. Four answer, walks over to the plants. Something. I don't care. Right? Something. What happens from C to D? Empties the water. That's what happens. Pours out all the water slightly better. Pours out all the water at a rate of 1.75. Oh, sorry. Empties can at rate of 1.75 liters per. 20 seconds, 70 to 90, right? Per 20 seconds. How do you make that even prettier? What would I do to that to get it to a minute? Times three. So what do I do to that? Times three, which is three, four point, five point two five. Five point two five liters per minute. Does everybody understand? This is the first unit where this new sort of way you, the, the government wants us to mark you, this is the first unit in the math that I can really get into it. Understand? Because before then, the answer's right or the answer's wrong. Right? And you could do it a bit in trig, but not even really there. All right. Pause. All of you attempt to draw this graph. Okay, so what goes on the x-axis? Which is where we put the independent variable. Time, indeed. And what are we going to be measuring time in? Excellent. Time in hours. You must give what you are measuring and the unit is be it is being measured in. Everybody clear? Okay. And what's going to go on this side? Distance. Measured in what? KM. 
Nice. All right. So we are going to need how many sections of graph? Four. Good. A, I'm going to graph in black. So Jack leaves home and travels 140 kilometers at a constant speed. And it will take him two hours, yes? So let's put our hours on. One, two, three, four, five. That's ah, too small. Let's make this bigger. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Everybody happy? All right. And the uh, uh, over here, uh, let's go up by 20. 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. 20, 40, 60, 80, 200. 20, 40, 60, 80, 300. All right, so what's the first part of my line look like, which I'm going to graph in black? What's the first point? Where does it end? Two and up how far? 140. Now, since it's a constant speed, we draw a straight line. Now, is that realistic? No, it isn't, because there's stoplights and things. But the way it's written, apparently Jack lives right on the highway. Out his driveway, off he goes. Okay? I know, technically. But everybody happy? Everybody agree? How fast was he going? No. 70 kilometers per hour. Because 140 kilometers per two hours. Everybody good? Okay. What happened from hour two to three, which I will graph in red? Visits his grandma. Does his distance change? No, because he's at his grandma's house. So what kind of line do we draw? Flat line, because distance doesn't change. Next line I'll graph in blue. Jack drives 50 kilometers back towards home. Where does the line go? He's only going to go 50 kilometers. So he was at 140 so he's going to end up at 90, yes? Does it give us a speed? No. So what should we assume? Probably about the same speed, right? So this slope down, so he's only going 50 kilometers, so it can't take quite an hour, can it? Right? So let's put it out there. How many people have that line right there? Put your hands up if you do. How many people don't have that line? Do you not have that line because you didn't get there yet? Or do you not have that line because you think that line is wrong? How many people just didn't get to it yet? How many people think it's wrong? Good, because it is wrong. Do graphs illustrate what actually happened? No. Is the distance Jack is traveling going up or down? Let me give you an example. How far have I traveled? 5 steps, right? How far have I traveled? 10 steps. Even though I went home. We'll talk about it more in a second. Thank you. So this is what most people drew. Remember, in this case, this is not right. It should have gone up at that same slope. Everybody cool? Now, if you did draw it downwards, that's okay. We're going to do something with that in a minute. So just make your changes now. Stops for 30 minutes for supper. So it's going to be a flat line for half an hour. Yes? And then what? He returns home taking two more hours. Is that line going to be steeper or less steep than this? 
Did he go home faster or slower than he started? Slower, because he took two hours to go only 90 kilometers. So that line, which I'm going to graph in green, has to be this way, less steep. And for you down here, you have gone this way down to zero. Does everybody understand how to do the graph? All right. Now, let's talk about physics. That's what this blank space is for. In physics we, and in math as well, we measure things differently. There is something called a scalar value. A scalar value has what we call a magnitude. And that is simply an amount. Okay? Distance. That's an amount, right? When I get in my car and I drive to school, it's 32 kilometers. I have traveled 32 kilometers, yes? When I turn around and drive home, it's another 32 kilometers. So the little clock thing in my car says the car has moved 64 kilometers, yes? But if the Google satellite flies over my house and takes a picture of my van in the driveway at 8 in the morning, and then it flies over my house again and takes a picture of my van when I'm home at 3 in the afternoon, how far does that satellite think my van has moved zero even though it has my example right here you all saw me take 10 steps but where did I end up right where I started so if somebody had walked by the hallway before I took those steps and walked by on the way back would they think I had done anything no all right and that's what we're talking about here those are scalar values the other way we measure is vector values and vectors also have a magnitude, but they also have and a direction. This is what we call displacement. So here is what I mean. Go back to my walking thing. My distance traveled was 10 steps. What was my displacement? Zero, because I ended up back where I started. Everybody understand? Now, in math, in reality, there is an infinite amount of directions, isn't there? How many directions are there in math class? Nope. What is math? What does math use? Numbers, right? Integers, numbers. What are the, oh, how many directions can a number go? Two. What are they? No. Negative and positive. That is the only directions we have in math class. So we have to make some rules up for how we use negative and positive to define the real world. All right? And that's what's going, what we're going to write in this blank right here. Positive means a whole bunch of stuff. It means to the right. It means up. It means away from where you started. It means uh, up, away, forward. It, can, it means north. It means east. That's about all I can think of right quickly off the top of my head. So what then are negatives? All the opposites. Left. Down. Uh, home. Instead of away. Backward. South. East. Damn it. West. So again... From your people's perspective, what is my distance traveled when I'm done moving? Everybody ready? From your perspective, what is my distance traveled? From your
your perspective. Left, five. So what is it? Negative five steps. Does everyone understand? Okay? From your perspective. From my perspective, you could say it was positive five steps because I moved away from where I started. You could also say positive because I moved to my right. Does everybody get it? So I'm now, from your perspective, at negative five. Yes? So my distance traveled is what? What is my distance travel? Is my distance travel scalar or vector? Scalar, so there's no direction. So what is my distance travel? How far did I go, guys? This is not a complicated question. Five. That is my distance travel. What is my displacement? negative 5 from your perspective. Are you all good? Now, watch. 1, 2, 3. What is my distance traveled? 8. No direction. What is my displacement? Negative 5, positive 3. So my displacement is negative 2 because I am two steps away from where I started. Does everybody understand? Okay. So, back to this graph. This one is distance. Because I'm always going up. It's scalar. This one is displacement. Because I'm working my way back towards home. Does everyone understand? Good. When's the break? Oh, we got lots of time. Booyah, Grandma. All right. Look at this graph. Look at it very carefully and describe what is happening. So, have you seen a graph like this before? Have you? In my class. No, you have not. Why? Because this is not distance versus time. This is speed versus time. Yes? So, what is happening from... Zero to two seconds. She is, she does not run eight meters. Her speed goes from standing still to eight meters per second. So, she accelerates to eight meters per second. So it took her two seconds to get up to full speed. What happens from two seconds to 14 seconds? What's going on? It's a flat line. Is she standing still? No. She runs at her top speed. Because she's running a race, yes? What happens from 14 to 16 seconds? She stops. Now, somebody always says, then why doesn't it go straight down? If the line went straight down, what has happened to time? What has happened to time? It stopped. Can she run at the speed of light? No, she can only run at 8 meters per second. Speed of light is 300,000 kilometers per second. 
So that is why there has to be this line. Even if she runs into a wall, technically, it's still not straight up and down. Does everyone understand? Everybody got it? All right. Turn the page over. Your homework between now and the end of your... I'll give you some time in the last block. Goes up to... Now, I think, I think there's a screw-up in the way I set this up for printing here. One sec. Two eighty one and two ninety five. So you are going to attempt to draw these first. You guys start working on one fifty four. Then I'll tell you what I need, want you to do for the rest of your work time today. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, you are doing page 154 first. Then if you look on the outline in your book, which is page 142, I want these two done. Now, please, when you look in your book, these cover a ton of pages because there's lots of pictures and the questions are a paragraph long. And the answers have pictures in them. So it seems like a lot of work, but it's not actually that many questions. Page 295, which in your book is page 160, only do 10 and 11 on it. And I'm going to give you time after your break for all this, okay? We are not going to get to our quiz today. Because after you do that, this work, and we discuss it, I'm going to move on to one more bit of lesson, and that's going to end the day, which means we'll be having a quiz early-ish tomorrow, plus your cumulative. Okay? Okay. I also am hoping to go over this test, but based on last test, I don't know if I'll be going over it. Go.